Hi guys, it's Michelle, and today's video is going to be yet another kind of serial killer, life of a serial killer. Uh, uh, it's going to be all about Charles Manson. Charles Manson wasn't technically dubbed as like a serial killer. He like did kill people and like had a cult. So he was more of like a cult leader, I guess, but I still find him very interesting. And I, say, I would say he's probably one of the most notorious killers ever. Like well, people still talk about him to this day. Um, and yeah, so I thought that this video would be super interesting. I am going to say that it won't be as detailed as I would like it to be because it would be like over an hour long because there's just so much information when it comes to Charles Manson that um, if you guys want me to do a second video just talking about the Manson family, I feel like would be pretty interesting to go into detail about how they came to be in a sense of how they came to be able to be controlled by Charles Manson which if you guys don't know who the Manson family is we will get into later in the video. I also just want to quickly say that I did open a Depop account I said it yesterday but I'm gonna say it again today because bitch I'm gonna self promo myself why the fuck not and you guys can follow it it's just at Michelle Platty. I'm very excited about it like I can't wait to like I'm thinking about like the different pictures in my head that I'm gonna post but it's basically oh like an app where you can buy um where you can buy clothes um so I'm gonna be selling some of my clothes like literally from my closet like that I don't wear anymore and I have some like really nice stuff like I feel like I have like a ton of shit from Urban Outfitters that I'm gonna sell for cheap so um if you guys are into that you can check it out I'm gonna like put stuff for like all sizes all genders like stuff that's very feminine masculine or like quote unquote feminine feminine masculine and also stuff that's like gender fluid and like I'm just very excited about it because I think that we need like an all-inclusive kind of shop so that's kind of what I'm going for with it so make sure you follow me on there it'll be linked in the description box anyway now let's get into this because this video is probably uh, hopefully, I don't know. I always think a video is gonna be long and it'll be like 10 minutes. It's not that bad, but we'll see. So like I said, Charles Manson was one of the most notorious killers to exist and he was born on November 12th, 1934 to Kathleen Maddox. So he was known as No Name Maddox first few weeks of his life. He was born to this prostitute um, Kathleen and he basically had a very rough childhood. He later got the name Charlie and it is assumed that it, he was named after one of one of Kathleen's like suitors I guess and he never knew his father. So he was born in Cincinnati, Ohio and he grew up having a lot of tendencies that would later foreshadow his very crazy events that he did. Not necessarily anything that would be like, oh, he's gonna grow up to be a killer and a cult leader, but like, kind of, like to be honest, we'll, at which we'll get into. But he had a lot of things that he did that foreshadowed what he grew up to become. For example, as a child, he would often recruit members of his first grade class and tell them to physically attack some of the other students that he wasn't too fond of. And when these kids got caught, he realized that he wasn't getting in trouble, even though it was his idea and his plan to attack these first graders. This is something that you're going to want to note later in this story. At one point when Charles was a kid, his mother served his short sentence for robbery and Charles lived with his aunt, uncle, and cousin. Charles apparently caused nothing but trouble and continuously blamed it on other people whenever he got into trouble. He began to develop a weird fascination with guns, but mostly he got a fascination with sharp objects like knives and stuff like that. As a teen, Charles was arrested many times for, I guess, quote unquote, little things in comparison to now, like stuff like robbery and things like that. But he did perform multiple armed robberies, so he was arrested quite a bit in his teenage years. So he went through a really rough childhood in and out of like homes and it was just very complicated for Charles and you see that a lot in killers that they usually do have some type of traumatic childhood event or just lifestyle as a kid that actually could not make them become a serial killer necessarily because a lot of people have rough childhoods and are perfectly normal but could have at least attributed to his behavior. So it is important to note that Charles Manson was actually a pretty talented singer um, I'm gonna play a clip of some of his music. The time keeps on flying. 
think you're loving, baby. Obviously, he was a pretty good singer, but he wasn't really that successful at all. And like, he tried to come in contact with like the Beach Boys and different and different record labels and different people in the music industry, but never found success in the field, which is something that he really, really wanted was to be famous. And of course, now he is just for like bad shit, not for being like a cool singer. So in the late 60s, Charles Manson began to form a cult. And this cult would later be known as the Manson family. This cult is very, very terrifying. And honestly, we are going to go into a bit of detail with the cult. But like I said, if you guys want a whole video on just the Manson family, I can do that as well if you would want that. But the Manson family was basically a cult that killed people. So the first member of the cult that he met was named Mary Brunner. And she kind of like had like a thing. In 1968, she actually gave birth to Charles' son, Valentine Michael Manson. So Mary Brunner would help recruit different women to be in the cult. There were some men involved as well, but it seemed to center around Charles' women, who he had sex with and also provided them with drugs, specifically LSD. Something that's very important to note and into Charles Manson's whole story is that he believed there was going to be a race war um, because it was the 1960s. So it honestly isn't wasn't that hard to believe because there was a, obviously a lot of racism going on It was terrible. It was just like a very very shitty time It was very segregated and it was just really sad and fucked up So Charles Manson actually believed that there was going to be a race war and that he believed it was going to be white people against black people and that black people would win However, he thought in his head that when this race war occurred the people of color would not know how to control the world since it since the world was predominantly like white people controlled it obviously at the time there had never been like a black president and like stuff like that so it was predominantly controlled by white people charles manson saw this as oh they won't know how to control like the world so his idea was for him and his entire cult were going to hide in a desert and while the race war was occurring, so that when they came out of the desert and the race war was over, because the black people wouldn't know what they were doing with controlling it, this is obviously all in Charles' head, the cult would be able to take over and control the entire world. So this is the idea that Charles had in his head, and honestly, it contributed to a lot of his like inner thoughts and the killings and it just it gets really messy in a bit but I'll explain. So something that people believe sparked the killings um, was when Charles first killed the, a drug dealer. Now this drug dealer was a person of color so he was very terrified that he himself had started the race war by killing a person of color he believed was a black panther so that was what was going through his head. So a lot of people believe that he killed the next people out of fear and also anger because he believes he started the race war. Um, yeah, his head is very complex and obviously fucked up, so. But I want to talk about the actual cult for a minute because it is actually pretty interesting. Like I said, most of these women, like, pretty much lived on LSD. They also followed Charles' orders, obviously no matter what, including killing for them. Which is super interesting because if we go back to his childhood, he led little first graders into getting in trouble and attacking the children he didn't like when it was his plan and he was not like in trouble for it because he knew he had set up other people to do it for him which is something that is obviously now common and foreshadowed his entire like cult because he did lead a cult that he probably didn't think that he would get in trouble for in the future but obviously he did because we know about it so the cult is interesting in itself because charles manson controlled these young women they were around the ages of like 20 he even convinced them to carve the x in their forehead it was just very very controlling and manipulating and like i said if you want a second video about how he might have like controlled them and what their kind of backstories are like the different girls that were in the cult with some of the members of the cult included leslie van houten obviously also mary brunner was in it and then kind of famously because they were involved in the first murder that we are going to talk about um besides the drug dealer which is susan atkins linda kazabian and patricia krenwinkel so these three girls were actually the people who murdered charles manson and the manson family's most famous famous like murder. One was on the actress Sharon Tate 
you might have heard of her. She's a very beautiful actress and she was pregnant at the time her baby was due two weeks after her death. So on August 9th, 1969, Sharon Tate was living with her husband, Roman Polinski. However, he was in London at the time. That night, Sharon Tate, I don't know how to pronounce this, Wojcikorin Frykowski, sorry, <laughs> And Abigail Folger spent the night at the Tate house. The Manson family came in around midnight and, and murdered them by stabbing them to death. You might be thinking, what could be this connection with a famous actress and Charles Manson? Like, Sharon Tate is just an actress, he didn't know her. What was the connection? This is actually a very interesting potential motive. And um, it's pretty obvious that this probably was the motive because it would be too weird to be a coincidence. But it goes back to Charles Manson being rejected by the music industry. A man named Cherry Melcher was one of the record producers who turned down Charles Manson. It is extremely, extremely, extremely important to note that Terry Melcher actually lived in Sharon Tate's house before Sharon moved in. So it is believed that Charles Manson sent the girls over to kill Terry Melcher out of revenge and and also out of the fear that he had started the race war. He's terrified that he started it, which obviously he didn't. He believed that he sent those girls over there to his old house because he believed that he still lived there at the time and wanted to murder him out of revenge for not signing him or giving him a record deal. So that was the first murder and obviously, like I said, they were stabbed to death. They wrote the word pig out of the blood of Sharon Tate on like, and it's just, it's, it's very, gross and obviously and terrifying because these girls were like tripping out on acid while killing people like it's just completely insane how one person Charles Manson could have so much manipulation over these like hippies like at the time they were just like these they were hippies and they were in their 20 early 20s and just random women like it's just it's insane and the next night was the second murder that occurred this one seemed completely random because they murdered a random ass family um that they didn't seem to know and didn't have any connections with and it was the LaBiancas. So the Manson family murdered Lino and Rosemary LaBianca. Once again, they were stabbed to death. It was the next, it was the night after Sharon Tate and nobody connected the murders at the time. Lino LaBianca had like war carved into his chest. So obviously people believed that this was out of being scared for the upcoming war that they believed was going to happen. Not only that, but on the refrigerator, there was the words Helter Skelter, which was written in blood. Like this became part of the Charles Manson case because Helter Skelter was a Beatles song on their White Album, which Charles Manson believed was directly speaking to him. He believed that John Lennon was straight up talking to him and letting him know that this was going to happen and then this race war was going to happen. He believed that this album was about the race war and it was only directed to Charles Manson and telling him what he had to do. So, I don't know. Obviously, he was crazy and it's honestly insane that he could have manipulated so many people into also believing the crazy shit that he had to say. It's, it's terrible. The Manson family ended up getting into trouble, um, obviously, because we know about it today, to this day, but basically the girls didn't really understand that they weren't supposed to tell people that they murdered other people because Charles Manson had always taught them to be very truthful and very honest, but he was referring to with him, like he, they should be honest to him. Not saying that they should go tell people that they, they murdered people because that obviously wasn't Charles's intention. He didn't want to get caught. They kind of just blabbed everything and they are sentenced to life in prison and they are still in prison to this day. Some of them have died, but most of them are still in jail. I just find it interesting that they're like murderers, yet their honesty led them to their own like trial and it's just is insane. But Charles Manson obviously also is in prison. To this day, he was sentenced to conspiracy and murder. So most of the Manson family, like I said, are still alive and in jail and have been denied parole multiple times, including Charles. He has been like, I think not even close to Grich to pull up parole, but like there have been multiple instances where people thought he was going to get out of jail on parole, but obviously he has not and he is still currently in jail to this day, but people believe he still has a cult tie outside of prison, which is obviously very scary to think about because he does get a lot of letters and it's just 
it's all very terrifying. But that is it for today's video. If you guys liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what you think about this just person. Like, I don't, I don't know. This cult is insane to me. Like, I just think it's crazy how he could have manipulated so many people. And let me know also if you want a second video talking about kind of maybe going into depth on how he obtained like the knowledge or the way or whatever to manipulate these humans because I think it's insane. Um, but let me know if you would want that. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram because I'm always posting really dope shit on there. Subscribe for new videos every single day and I will see you all on Monday. Goodbye. Just to be stronger than me You've been here